What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I want to talk about lists in Python. All right, in the last video, we talked about numbers and math. In this video, I want to talk about lists in a little bit more detail. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we've already looked at lists a little bit. I want to talk about them in more detail in this episode, in this video. So let's go names and let's create a, a real quick list and let's go John and separate them with commas and Bob and Tina, right? And we can use single quotes or double quotes. If I could type, <laughs> it's very hard. Okay, so either one will work perfectly cool. So to access one of these, you remember, we can just print out, if we want to print them. And we just call names, and then we use these square brackets, and then we just put the number. And so we remember that lists start at zero. So John is zero, Bob is one, and Tina is two. So if we wanted to print out John, we would just call zero. So if we save this, come over here and run it, boom, we get John. So okay, we've already sort of looked at stuff like this. Now, what if we want to change items in here? Well, we can just call names and then the number. So we let's say we want to change John and we could just set that equal to something else. So uh, what do we say? We want, instead of John, we want um, Wes, right? So now if we save this and run it, print out the zero with item, we get Wes. Or we could just come down here and print out all the items, save this, run it, Wes, Bob, and Tina. You see John is completely gone. We have deleted it. We've overwritten it. It is gone forever now. So that's kind of interesting. We could, instead of doing that, so let's say we want to add Wes to the end of this. We want to append Wes. We can use the append function. So it's names.append. And it's a function, so we can just pass in Wes. If we save this, run it, boom, we see John, Bob, Tina, Wes has been added to the end. If we want to call Wes, he would be the zero, one, two, third item. Save this, run it, and Wes. Very cool. Uh, I mentioned the first time we talked about lists that you can put all kinds of different things into lists. You can put numbers. Let's get rid of Wes here. So this is the John zero one to third thing. If we save this and run it, we see 41. Now this is in fact a number we can confirm that by doing math right here. Let's add 10 to that. So instead of 41, it should be 51. If we save this and run it boom 51. Uh, just because the item is added to a list doesn't mean its essence doesn't change. This is still a number. We can still do numbery things to it. These are still strings. We can, these things are all strings. We can do stringy things to them. Uh, we can, let's see, what else can we do? We can add variables. So let's go other name equals Wes. And then over here, we can add other name. So if we save this, and run it, we see John, Bob, Tina, and Wes. Wes has been added. Wes is a string, even though it's added as a variable. Inside the variable, it's a string, so we can do stringy things. You can do the same thing with numbers. If we change this to you know, 41, it would be the same. We can add other lists inside of lists. So let's go nums and set that equal to one, two, three, four, five. It's just a list with numbers in it. And if we come down here and add nums, if we save this and run it, we see John, Bob, Tina, and then this other list inside of here. So this is the zero, one, two, third thing. If we call that third thing, we get just that list. Now we can access things inside of this list if we want. And to do that, we just slap another set of square brackets 
and then call the number of the item inside of that list that we want. So let's say we want three, right? That's the zero, one, two. It's the second item inside that list. So we just put a two there. So three and two. If we save this and run it, we get three. And like anything else, that's a number. We can do numbery things. So we can add 10 to that if we wanted to run it. 13. Very, very cool. So one more thing I want to talk about is, so we have this list, right? And let's get rid of this. And there's three items in it, right? We know that. We can look at it and see it and say there's three. But it's very, very conceivable that you'll have lists with thousands of items, millions of items maybe. And you may not necessarily know exactly how many items are in that list, right? So let's say you want the last item. How do you find out? Or how do you find out how many items are in the list? Well, we can call the len function, L-E-N, stands for length. And we can just pass in the list. So here, if we wanted to find out how many items are in here, for instance, we could just print that out. So there are three items we can see. Let's run this to see if that's true. Boom, three items. Now we can also use this to find out what the last item is, right? So let's call our list and we want, which item do we want? Well, oops, we want the len names. Now this will return three, but lists start at zero. So John is zero, Bob is one, Tina is two. Tina is two, she is not three. So if we want to use the len function, which will return three, we need to do a little bit of math and go minus one. So it's the number of items minus one that will give you the list item number of the last item, right? So if we do this, it should print out Tina. If it's, if we've done this correctly, oh, come back. There we go. Uh oh, where did I mess up? Oh, misspelled names. Not a good idea to misspell the name of the list. Okay, so names plural. All right. And boom, we get Tina. So very cool. Lists are just so important and you'll use them forever. They're just useful in a zillion different ways. A lot of times if you're getting stuff out of a database, you might use a list or a dictionary. You can put dictionaries inside of lists. That's useful. You'll do that a lot. You know, it's just if you're using an API, you might use a list. There's all kinds of reasons to use lists. Anytime you have a list of things, which you always will, You'll use them and, and very cool. So remember, uh, the difference between a list and a tuple is we can change lists. So we've seen we changed John to Wes. We added something to the end. You know, we can remove something completely, just set it equal to nothing. And, and pretty easy, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all of my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.